Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel um, where I talk about speakers from a poor man's point of view. So when I say poor man, I mean people with a medium income. And today I'm going to talk about the Focal 1028. Is it worth it? In the used market today, uh, October 2017, in the Canadian used market, it's between four to five thousand dollars. So, uh, just as my other video, I was saying for some, for me to spend like four thousand, three or four thousand to buy a pair of speakers, it has to be very impressive, because you know I'm saving so many. Uh, I feel, I'm saving so, I'm saving a few months, so that I can afford it. So what do I think about them? When you look at the Focal speakers, the first thing you talk everybody talks about is the beryllium tweeter, right? And uh, this is funny, but what blew me away uh, with these speakers was not the tweeter; it was actually the base. So look at that; these two small, I don't know, maybe are they six inch woofers? But I can tell you, this these speakers have the best base I've ever. Out of all the speakers I've owned, it's very fast, it's very tight, and it's very powerful. So me and my friends, uh, we're blown away by it because of the bass. And you know, I guess that's what differentiated between a very expensive speaker and compared to my other cheaper speakers around me here, right? So the mid-range, it's good. Berlin Twitter, it's good. Uh, and once again, the problem with this these speaker from what i found is that you need more modern equipment to drive it so uh, i drove it with the ls16 the audio research ls16 uh, i drove it with the accuface uh, c22 and they were just okay and i, I use bryson 4b sst classes ca2300 which is a 300 watt uh, amp and that amp cost like seven or eight grand when it was new um, I drove it with the uh, Acuface P2266 uh, Del Canto 1000, that's 500 watts at 8 ohms, right? And in the beginning, I was really not, I was impressed, but not that impressed. Not like, oh, I spent $4,000 and man, these are so good. I didn't have that impression until I started, uh, until I changed my DAC uh, from uh, Ego 12, sorry if I'm not pronouncing correctly to uh, Exasound E28. Now, the big, the, but the biggest change was when I bought, when I got myself a Moran's SC, I think it's the SC11, I forgot the model number. It's, it's a preamp that's only like six years old, I think. So it was more, it's more modern. And I felt like it, it was better when I have modern equipment driving these speakers. That's when I start realizing, wow, the Beryllium tweeters is very impressive. Uh, you can hear the micro details. You know, we, we often exaggerate. You can hear the pin dropping on the floor. It's almost there. It's not there yet. Usually those are speakers that are in the 100,000, right? Um, that's another review. Um, but having said that, uh, when I start having uh, a newer preamp, a better DAC, that's when I start hearing the difference, where I'm like, wow, these are pretty impressive speakers. So much so that uh, I put it up for sale, it's actually sold already. Uh, so I just want to make this uh, video before it leaves my house. So much so that I kind of don't want it to go. I, I would like to keep it, but the reality is four grand is a, it's a bit expensive for me, right? Four point four to five grand actually. Uh, I sold it somewhere in between, so that's the market price. If you if you, they're usually about four point three grand to about five grand on the used market. Is it worth it? If you can find one at four grand, yeah, run, go get it. Uh, below that, don't even think about it. Just just bring it home. Uh, even if you don't have the equipment to drive it, right? Because there's a lot of potential these with this speaker. Uh, my current setup. When it was new, it's probably twelve, thirteen thousand, excluding the speaker, and it's able to give a pleasant sound. Now, having said that, it's still metallic base, Berlin tweeter, and so forth, right? So it's not 
uh, like the Dying Audio Soft Dome Tweeter. It's not like the old Kef 105 where it's more, uh, as, I, uh, as I'm going to be using this term a lot, sweet. The, the vocals are not as sweet, right? It's more the new, new type of sound where it's really fast, it's very detailed. Uh, you can analyze the song with it. You can hear, oh, that's where the drum, that's where the guitar, that's where the drums are. Uh, oh, somebody dropped something on the floor. It's that kind of speaker, right? Is it musical? Yeah, I guess it's okay. It's okay. I mean, for a speaker to be both musical and uh, audiophile speakers, it has to be very, very expensive. For me, these fall more in the uh, audiophile speaker category, not the musical category. Um, but definitely still, uh, let's be realistic, it's only about 8,000 to 10,000 new, right? So there's only so much it can do. Now, uh, it might sound kind of funny for me to say, well, it's only eight to 10,000, right? In the world of speaker, eight to 10,000 is actually quite normal. It's just normal, uh, normal level, right? And um, so to, to, to say that it sounds fantastic, yes, it's true. To say that it sounds uh, amazing, Yes, it's true, only if you have the rest of the equipment to go with it. So these speakers demand a lot of power. I know it's rated at 90 dB, 92 dB. But when I drive it with, uh, with low power amp, I can, I mean, I, I can feel that it's not, uh, like all the woofers are a bit separated. I like it when everything when I, when I can't tell that where it's, where, which woofer is it coming from. I know it's not a good uh, way to explain it, but it, it, I, I like them to blend seamlessly, right? So when I drive it with a low power amp, um, I feel that they're a bit uh, disjoint, if that's the, the term I can use with them. Uh, so definitely you need a high power amp to drive these. But, but then again, I'm a bit biased right now because ever since I started using high power amps, I can't go back. It is 120 watt amps is like, oh, you know, 70 watts, don't even think about it, right? So um, my impression, therefore, it's, uh, it's biased towards high power amp. Uh, the Focal, a lot of people say it's very bright, very sharp. I spoke to a lot of people who had Focal before, and I have to agree if you don't have the right equipment. You really can get smooth sound from them if you have the right cables, the right DAC, uh, the right preamp, and mostly you need the power amp so that it, it is very strong on the low end so it doesn't sound harsh, right? So once I have it set up the way uh, it is, I'll probably list it uh, in my equipment uh, list. Uh, it doesn't sound harsh. It's not a harsh sounding speaker, but I can understand 100% why people say, I don't know, it's too bright, it's too, uh, you know, it's, it's too yeah, harsh. I guess that's the word for it. Um, and uh, I, I, I had to agree in the beginning before I started changing my equipment to, for, to adjust to these speakers. But once you, you get the right things, the right equipment in place uh, uh, is pretty incredible. Now, some people say I can drive it with a tube preamp, right? And therefore it should be smooth. Yeah, well, make sure you have a more modern tube preamp. Uh, as I said, I drove it with an Audio Research LS16. It's great. It's fantastic. Uh, my friends prefer, some of my friends prefer it with the Audio Research LS16 than my Moran's. But for me, my taste, I, I like it smooth, but I like it spicy also, right? I, I want to hear that little harshness in it. I'm exaggerating. I, I like it smooth, but I like that little extra, like, you know, you can hear that ding, ding, ding sound in the detail. Uh, it doesn't hurt your ears, but it's so sharp that you can hear it, right? So, uh, yeah, that's my impression of it. Uh, how's the sound stage? Fantastic. Uh, well, you can expect that from these kind of speaker. How, how is the imaging? Well, imaging, I, I don't know what the term is. Imaging or transparency? Can you pinpoint people easily when you listen to them?
The answer is yes. Not as good as the 936, I don't know why. But yes, I can pinpoint, okay, that's where the piano is, that's where the, the violin is, and so forth, right? Um, bass is very fast, uh, soundstage is big, uh, the vocals are very, uh, I think they're more laid back, is that the term? They're more uh, at the back, right? So that everything is probably balanced, details, which is the height. Uh, the vocal and the bass, they're, they're very balanced. A lot of times speakers either have the, the, the vocal coming forward or the bass is very forward, right? Or, but in this case, I felt that they were very balanced. So uh, yeah, that's my impression of the uh, Focal 1028. So uh, as you can see, I have a lot of speakers behind me and uh, I'll be going through them one at a time uh, and all my other equipments. So subscribe. Thank you.